So, hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, James Alexander Dalswick. Uh, I'm working with my colleagues, uh, with uh, Professor Viva Milanova uh, and Dr. Yeah, uh, not Dr. Professor Viva Milanova. Um, we're looking exclusively at collision avoidance systems uh, uh, within online aerial vehicles. Um, this mainly because there's been a huge surge in the popularity of online aerial systems and existing for robust and safe safe uh, collision avoidance systems. Okay, so what I'll talk to you about today is just a little bit about the motivation behind this uh, and some of the background of why such systems are necessary. Uh, but, and then also highlight the mechanism that, we, that we've been working on recently. Uh, it's still ongoing, so uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the problems we've encountered. Uh, we'll highlight the different sections about how we represent the, uh, represent the obstacles in this technique, uh, along with the general description of the problem that we're trying to solve uh, and generating uh, optimal escape trajectories. Um, we then move on to discuss, like I said, some of the challenges that we've come across in doing so, along with some preliminary results which are very fresh. Um, obviously, speaking of that, as <coughs> some speculation for future work. Okay, so in terms of motivation, as I briefly mentioned, there's, the, the, the airspace is becoming increasingly diverse, as I'm sure many of you know, uh, working with autonomous systems. There, there are a lot of, uh, we're seeing a rise in autonomous vehicles making their way into the public airspace and the domestic airspace as well. Uh, with B2B differences in the village of Crown Claire. Uh, because of this, there's a need for systems which, uh, which can communicate at many levels, or in the absence of communication, be able to handle or be tolerant to systems which cannot or do not offer the same level of capabilities their own. Um, so, basi so basically, all industries itself is something that's infancy. We want to see uh, systems that can be proven to be robust and to be reliable before they're released into into the air, into the airspace. Okay, so explicitly, there's a, the, the mechanism that we're looking at today uh, is it's a built up after the premise of the free flight principle, um, within which is something called the sensor test and the void problem, which uh, I guess maybe many of you are familiar with from field robotics, which is, which is where we assume there is no prior knowledge about an obstacle. Uh, whether it's for communication reasons or paper, uh, other capability reasons, sensing, uh, and so forth. Uh, but this itself can be assumed in parallel with other mechanisms that should be avoided as well, that um, well, can accompany other mechanisms. So, uh, yeah, so this mechanism itself is seems to be non, uh, non cooperative, which means, yeah, like I said, there's no communication. No assumed prior knowledge and no information communicated. <coughs> Therefore, we have to work with information that we produce ourselves. As you can see, um, so this is accomplished in surveillance, which is the active sensing of the surroundings, uh, identification of risk, and therefore whether or not negotiation is possible or necessary, and uh, determination of the appropriate living avoidance approach and or escape trajectory. So, an example we will look at, um, just to give a bit of context for the future, for the future slides, is um, where we have a much more capable aircraft, being a global hawk, <laughs> uh, flying in a similar in an airspace with a much less capable system, in this case, CGIS, I think. Um, we can assume here that the global hawk, although unlikely, because they will not operate in the same flight windows, just example, um, the communication systems on board, the global are much more sophisticated than that of a, of a what is it, just what is assumed to be a commercially available drone. Um, so basically, we need to, while there's no communication available between the two systems, the global must act to avoid the less, the less capable system regardless. I mean, the same example could be extended for things that can communicate, but are unwilling to do so by terrestrial means or cannot communicate. Maybe it's a White House, for example. They can't communicate directly. Um, so we, we assume that the, that the agent is able to deduce the position uh, by active sensing, either by a camera system, um, LIDAR, or range finders, um, onboard systems, we can deduce 
a book approximation of where the obstacle is in the 3D space in front of us. Uh, and also, therefore, its trajectory with some, with some estimation. Okay, so one of the methods that we look at, taking a more geometric approach directly towards uh, calculating these escape trajectories. And with that comes some assumptions um, in that we need to find an effective way to represent the obstacle. Uh, and do this so by generating a sphere which encompasses the maximum extremities of that obstacle. Uh, in, this, in the case we're using a line, oh, this would be the maximum width, a given sample of, a, of an object or a, a width in the radar as a width, for example. And um, this appears in the, in the spherical, um, spherical borders as you come to the obstacle on the edge. Um, so this can be traditionally done with a camera. With a camera, you can determine whereabouts this obstacle is in, in the uh, spherical coordinate system, along with a range tip that is used with a, a range finder or a direct Google lidar. And from this, we can extract a bounded estimate of the position of the obstacle and through a few successive samples the velocity. So this immediately presents some uncertainty that relates directly to the sensor measurement of the obstacle. Um, using the same mechanism uh, for the camera example, is if we were able to make some tangible deductions of how of how large the obstacle is from its width, its width in the visible visible azimuth. So see, here we can see that we can deduce the the radius the representative uh, box defining the radius of the obstacle using its width in the its width in the azimuth and its range. So, yeah. From, from this information that we're able to extract from the environment and from the obstacle itself, we're looking to generate an escape trajectory that will act to avoid said obstacle at the, at the, at the next time step, or generally direct the agent away from the obstacle in an optimal and minimal control effort fashion. Um, this is given the uncertainty in the senses, also in our own trajectory me measurement. Uh, so there's a lot of room for uncertainty. Uh, slightly more of the case later on. So, what we see here is an example of us um, deducing something uh, I refer to as the, uh, the mist vector, or the mist the box, which is a, a, bounded, a bounded vector principle, uh, detailing like a given the sense of uncertainty and the trajectory of uncertainty of the obstacle, um, the limits on uh, the, the separation between the agent and the obstacle. At, Given time to collision, perhaps the advantage of some uh, simple geometric operations uh, using some very uh, full mathematic uh, speculate and rough estimate in the box. Oh, rough estimate being a box with a bound of containing the interval of collision. Perhaps um, We can also, under, under the same premise, give ourselves. Uh, a bounded box representing the safe separation. So this is effectively moving the problem into the configuration space of the obstacle, uh, which allows us to use the radius of ourselves, which is assumed that it was constant, uh, and a safety factor, and the bounded region of the radius. So it does basically parameterize, parameterizes the required safe separation between the obstacles. Um, so from this, we can speculate conditions for collision, collision, conditions for separations. So a bounded region in the separation of So so I should mention that for all values, but this is positive, we assume that the no collision can occur because the separation uh, the separation is larger than the perspective. So the perspective is also can go to the uh, it's negative, we assume the collision is going to occur. So Using, using this idea, we intuitively we know that any, avoid, any avoidance action should act along the R vector because this, this vector represents it represents the, the separation between the obstacle and the agent at, at, the, at the time the closest approach, basically. So any act of acceleration uh, should act to enlarge the vector R and draw the, draw the obstacles further away from each other. And this can be represented mathematically as a solution, as a minimum solution to the Hamiltonian 
frequency fixing, where the acceleration vector, when aligned with RM, reduces the minimum, minimum sort of thing. It represents the minute the, the bounded region in the minimal maximum acceleration, sorry, maximum acceleration, no, minimum acceleration, maximum points. So we also want to make some, some consideration that, that this, the obstacle itself is, <coughs> is capable of inducing it to present of its own thing, this collision with sort of the obstacle uh, with the agent. And we represent this by proportioning the amount of avoidance necessary between the agent and the obstacle. Uh, we do this by, by assembling the ratios you see here, which expresses the um, degree of correction necessary for the breach of the agents. And what happens is as if say for example the agent is, is the obstacle is uncooperative and does not think to present its own phase, the proportion the proportion of um, RV scale becomes larger than the agent. And, uh, and therefore U A, the bounded region in the optical avoidance velocity, uh, becomes more severe. And we see uh, the bounded region U A take more harsh correction. Okay, so so far we've um, we've only really looked at collision avoidance for one particular object, because what ultimately previous slides have shown is that we can generate a bounded region in the optimal avoidance trajectory. Uh, and what we should, and taking advantage of the geometric nature of the problem, we can we can technically layer the camp at the intersection of multiple optimal regions for a, to, to to guarantee optimal avoidance of multiple obstacles. There's a, there's, a, there's a bit of an issue here that um, guaranteeing optimal avoidance of one doesn't necessarily guarantee optimal, optimal avoidance of another because there is such a thing as an yeah. intersection. So we need to develop some techniques that are techniques for handling that, for uh, strategies for selecting minimum, minimum control methods, etc. Okay. So finally, uh, my personal interests lie in actuators uh, and uh, coordinated flight of multiple vehicles. Uh, and because of this, we have assumed that the air agent itself is, is, is capable of omnidirectional movement. It can accelerate equally in all directions. Uh, because of this, we can, we initially, I should say, made an approximation of its capabilities as uh, this bounded this bounded blue square here, which is meant to infer the, the maximum velocities of the obstacle the agent. Uh, we do need to section with the intersection with the global, the global optimal regions. Think about the triangles and these dynamic, uh, dynamic possibilities uh, gives us the true trajectories that are available to the agent at the time. As you can see, thing. So, as so far, because this is this is something we've been looking at very recently. Like, uh, I wanted I wanted to show you something today, but we just quickly discuss some of the challenges we felt when we looked at before. Is that so I've made, I spoke to some of you about in the in the break. There's a there's a bit of possibly as awareness of making the trajectory of the obstacles currently. There's a the uncertainty of the trajectory uh, of the obstacle quickly becomes larger, and they need to find a, a better way of removing of well, removing uncertainty of progressive samples. And as of yet, I haven't quite haven't quite got that. So there's a need for a, a better estimation mechanism. Um, some of the because of the nature of the problem as well. There's it's quite likely when we're working with unit vectors in 3D flat region in space and intervals that zero reaches heavily in one or more components, especially when we're working with unit vectors, which just give rise to some some, prob some, some problems that we can talk about that later. But um, when you're working in terms of normalization of, of set vectors, the, the, it becomes clear that when working with a range in the normal of that vector that's division by zero in most cases, when it makes a negative, it causes some problems. So, this is not the first time, but I really want to show you something today based on some preliminary findings of, which were very fresh, I mean, yesterday. <laughs> so, to give you an identification of some well, proof of concept that seems to be working. So, we can see here that the waypoints of the individual colors. Um, are gradually being attained by the agents of the same colors. So I have to ignore the legend. It's a, it's a, it's very easy to show you something. But, but, uh, as you can see here, they make a course correction, seen uh, as a result of the intersection of the optimal regions. 
Okay, so I mean, principally that's that's like the, the, the uh, approach highlighted. Um, we, we did this because we're trying to um, use the uncertainty in the trajectory to define a robust way for handling uncertainty in the sense of measurements and uncertainty in the obstacle trajectory in a way that can act as a kind of fault on for other, for other, uh, for other um, supposed flight controllers and other control mechanisms. Um, we expanded the mechanism to work towards handling multiple obstacles, which is something which, uh, which can cause a bit of a problem in terms of geometric avoidance, typically. And um, it's, it proves to be that we can you take advantage of the install methods for calculating intersections and unions between these device regions and regions for multiple objects. Uh, as you can just see, like I, 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 look, I'd love to show you something today. Uh, we've demonstrated this, the avoidance is possible, and it's one of the points we've presented today. Uh, however, there's much more that needs to be considered in terms of validation, in terms of things you uh, confirmation of robustness. So, uh, looking forward, uh, it talks about a better, a better estimation and calculation of uh, the trajectories, and in, in making making sure that the sensor model is, is more effective in terms of guaranteeing uh, convergence on the uncertainty. Uh, the vehicle models at the moment is currently a little bit primitive, but that's because we're currently in the initial stages of, of, uh, of uh, producing more realistic results. Um, so as I said, it's a proof of concept so far. Um, and we already have a series of scenarios which we want to validate and uh, test it against uh, increasing number of numbers of agents uh, and uh, more realistic scenarios, both typical for full-size airliners and densely populated swarm scenarios. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so we have time for a couple of questions, if you want. Uh, you said you would like to contract a certainty. Do you mean you want to control the over approximation in the interval computation? Or rather, you would have, you would want to have considered uh, ways to grab information to reduce the, the yeah. certainty of I think it's it's simply because of the current time. Uh, genetic estimation mechanisms and the things a bit more. Is that what we're doing is constant cost efficiency between position samples, and what we end up with is a seeing as a high sampling rate that there's um, the difference between position usually varies around zero, and therefore we get some we get a high divergence and uncertainty, and we could go uh, for plus or minus to a large amount. So in in the case the estimation mechanisms, that's so it's not. Occasional issues you set up the uh, ways you handle the intervals and so on. Is, yeah, in terms of like in, the inputs to the obstacle avoidance algorithm is it needs to be to be more refined. Because I guess you as a first step you have a maybe interval ext uh, extension of uh, a point uh, in this, uh, interval awaits. But then, but then for the normalized uh, vectors and so on, is there a chance you could use a kind of more robust parameterization using sine, cosine, or something that in the structure of the, the variables is a plug in and check it out? You need to like know something like that. Maybe, yeah. yeah. But that was some, some considerations before, there's some controls for that. So, no question? If you have one, yes, maybe someone else. I think that's a small question. You prefer to ask your question first? Okay. So, here you consider, you do not consider the, the, the state equation of the vehicle? Uh, probably in the theorem, I guess. No. But uh, uh, the speed, so it's some kind of, uh, you consider the speed? Uh, yeah, that's right. So it's some kind of, but yeah, yeah it's, uh, so I mean, it's, 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 it's relatively from the place of the... You don't take into account the kinematic equation in the region? Uh, no, but, but it was a hazard, so it needs to be replaced. 
Okay. So if I understand, the robot do not communicate. Yeah, it's not cooperative. It's not cooperative, cooperative so, collision avoidance. Uh, Even if in the one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Yes. So, so I have the feeling that if they do not communicate, well, they can see each other. Okay. So uh, okay. it can be a way of communicating. But uh, okay, but uh, if you, I cannot understand if you don't co do not communicate, how you can uh, guarantee the collision in the case where the situation where you show the uh, robots where going to the same point in the, in the situation. Yeah, so, <coughs> so we had a case where we had three agents moving towards each other, and independently, none of them communicated with the main one. Yes, yes. Uh, so the Ukraine is going to other two agents appear as obstacles to any one agent. Yes. So one agent is simultaneously trying to avoid the other two obstacles without communication. And it does so by inferring its position using bounded estimations of its position. And yes, and yes. Yes. yes, but this is so possible to guarantee that right. this, with this strategy you would have no collision. Uh, yes, because what happens is that the final meeting in UA, I'll show you, is formed, uh, is formed um, as a result of an optimal acceleration. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure. Sorry. So, in the case here, oh, sorry, the hammer turned So, in the case here, the, result, the resulting correction vector is formed uh, <coughs> the, the separation vector of that particular region. And the acceleration you see here, given in the red lines, uh, is generated. Perpendicular to that separation vector with that obstacle, so it'll be no, sorry, in parallel, uh, and it'll generally act to movement in that particular obstacle object. Obviously, that uh, vector takes a, takes an interval based on the uncertainty of its position, and um, the resulting the resulting correction you can see here, U A, is formed from uh, the, the correction vector R P S A, uh, and that the geometric representation of that is the U A. UA becomes a larger bounded interval with that particular So, so uh, you assume that the uh, all the aerial of vehicles did not form the same avoidance. <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in, in this in a scenario case, yeah, I, I do the agents make no assumptions. They they only see they only see the trajectory of the particular obstacle. That's it. So where one obstacle makes the correction to avoid collision, the other one, that's a happy coincidence for the other agents, is that it makes, it reduces their relative UA for that obstacle because the separation vector is now larger. So the proportion of avoidance is smaller for that particular obstacle. Um, so in short, it, it, it results in a bound fusion that is false. But um, there's, no direct, there's no direct assumption on the algorithms to use on the obstacle side. That could actually either help or not help. Okay. Because uh, there have been cases of underwater <laughs> where uh, two submarines mixing to this strategy probably yeah. collided. Yeah. And the might, might, so if, uh, might have some unexpected Yeah, so we came across a, um, a scenario where we have a direct head on collision uh, and previously in Ashton. So there's a pretty good figure where all three of these agents perform at that point, but because they can exist, they can make a negative acceleration stop. Yeah. Um, the way we could get, I don't know to show you that actually, but um, one of the ways we found out we got around this was to inject some randomness into the, the selection, and that simply creates a better, a better away from zero to start the process off with that randomness. One last uh, question. Yeah, you want to move to the next uh, yes, presentation? In the next, in, in the same, in the same spirit. Yeah. I would, I would. Uh, don't you think they are fine? What is your opinion? If you have several agents and each of them is implementing your your approach, uh, do you think it would be likely that uh, it would be kind of an emerging, uh, emerging uh, behavior as a swarm, and then each each one is uh, having its own. Yeah, because you have kind of reactive behavior because uh, the next decision and the next time step you reevaluate the velocities, I guess. Yeah, certainly. I think if, if this is done on a. Because the, 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 the idea of this is to basically apply the bolt on to other trajectory controllers. And it's, it, it's the same system, they're using the same trajectory measurement system. They're using the same bolt on collision avoidance algorithm like this. It's highly likely that you can see similar reaction yeah. to, uh, to, to an obstacle. It's nice to test this. 
Yeah, it's stupid, obviously, it's the same as artifacts that it has everything that we did. But I guess, yeah. I would say how, how the birds, the swarm, the swarm of birds, they, they just yeah. try to, yeah, I have, I have the name of that. It's uh, the voice, I think it's the voice of the bird. Yeah, it would be nice if you could reproduce with your algorithm this kind of behavior for a, a swarm of uh, small animals. Yeah, this is true. We actually we've actually already devised the scenarios to see the first thing, so this is the very last thing I want to see. But you can't really see it here, yeah, but yeah, yeah. sorry, can't turn uh, this void scenario now we have high high density yes. of uh, various systems as opposed to one of one digital points at the top. But there is this situation where uh, finding the optimal region for many ages around you becomes very difficult and uh, and you'll see some unusual results some strategies to find where these uh, intersections don't occur. But I think it's a, it's a positive situation. I mean, you have a very simple interaction model between the agents, and you have a large number of agents, and, and there was some experience where experiments were small, uh, simple interaction with large number of agents. You can have a, an emerging or artifact, I don't know how you call it, a kind of uh, uh, behavior. Yeah, it okay. would be nice to see. Maybe the emission strategy will be free in this case. Because we to now consider many uh, horizontal escape uh, maneuvers, but uh, with this complex uh, type of scenario, you will uh, perhaps uh, advise to yeah, that's move nice. in, uh, or in the vertical plan as well. <laughs> so, no, to make these to demonstrate that every example there is in the plane of the problem, so it can be resolved in a so it's the, the, result, the resulting correction. Mm -hmm. yeah. The body plane you call, uh, you talk about is not perhaps uh, the horizontal plane, but it be uh, the data plane. Uh, if that's, that's the answer you provide. Uh, the, the meaning of the yeah, plane. it's the, like, the plane in which it is resolved. Thank you very much for this nice presentation.